Hello and welcome to Crick Buzz for day two wrap up of this one off test match between Australia taking on India. Well, day two, the scoreline resumed at 132 for one with Smitty Mandana on 80. There are a couple of little starts there within the Indian batters. Shafali Verma, 31, who got out in day one. Poonam Routes, 36. Matali Raj, 30. Yastika Bhatia playing her debut match on 19. And none of those really went on. But the story of the day really is about Smitty Mandana and the fact that she was able to register her maiden ton. She did, however, have a chance. Early on in her innings today, she managed to hit a low full toss to Beth Mooney, who was able to take it. Then the umpires went upstairs just to check Elise Perry's front foot. And by the smallest of margins, she was over. And Smitty Mandana made her pay. She was able to no doubt ignite Twitter sphere with Sachin Tendulkar also congratulating her on her maiden ton. She is the first overseas tourist apart from England to register a hundred. So a special moment for her. The other talking point from an Indian perspective and really from the world game is about the spirit of cricket. I know we've had some controversy over in the IPL, but Poonam Rout showed that there is still the spirit of the game within women's cricket. I'm not too sure how many batters would actually do this. On 36 runs, having faced 165 deliveries, she got the faintest of edges to Elisa Healy. Only Sophie Muller knew the bowler and Healy went up. As soon as they went up, Putnam Rout turned on her heels and walked to the dugout. Philip Gillespie hadn't dismissed her. The real question marks about should a batter walk or shouldn't they? Well, I think it's extremely brave of Poonam Rao and just shows that she has integrity within the game because the fact that females don't get an opportunity to play test cricket and she wasn't given out and she's decided to walk, credit to her. It's something that I don't know if I would do in her situation. Apart from Elise Perry thinking that she got Smitty Mandana, you got a sense once we saw the replay in the no ball she just dropped again. Something just isn't going well for her. It's like she needs a little bit of luck. Finally, she got it. When she was able to dismiss Yastika Bhatia, Beth Mooney was able to actually snare her in that gully region, having already put down Natali Raj. So Elise Perry was able to pick up her first wicket in this series. And no doubt from an Australian perspective, she can now continue to build in her confidence and her belief in her action that she's able to execute time and time again. I mentioned the Indian batters and the fact that they all spent a fair bit of time out there. When you look at the amount of balls that they've faced, Poonam Rout 165, Matali Raj 86, Yastika Bhatia 40, just unable to really go on. And that's probably where India just missed a trick. They were, were put in a position where they could have accelerated the inning slightly before the new ball was taken. Yet, as I've mentioned before, and I mentioned on coverage, we don't get to play that many test matches. So no doubt as a player, and I would have been exactly the same, when you go out there, you want to occupy the crease. You want to spend some time. You don't want to throw away your wicket because when will you ever get another chance to come out and play test cricket? The Indian side doesn't know when, the Australian side do. It's actually at the end of our summer. So tomorrow, I can tell you that there is sunshine for the next two days. We shouldn't have any storms, which fingers crossed actually comes to fruition. So what does that mean for the state of play? I would still love to see both teams go out hard to try and see if they can set themselves up to actually win this test match. If they do that, they'll make it such an entertaining game. And that will not only help in increasing the eyeballs, but also about the conversation that more test cricket should be played at the women's level. India need to come out and try and score the runs quickly. Ideally, 400 runs would be, I think, enough. And if they can get that before or around the artificial light taking over and you throw Australia in at that tricky time, it is going to be difficult for Australia to be able to cope with the demands of Julian Goswami and Meghna Singh with the ball swinging around. 
As for Australia, pretty simple for them. They want to knock off these next five wickets as soon as possible and get an opportunity to, to bat in daylight. We're expecting that the pitch may actually increase in pace. Probably the best time to bat might be day three. But there is a but. There's still over 200 overs left in the game. Can one of these teams create a chance? Can one of these teams open up one of the sessions to put them in the front seat to secure those four, four points? I can't wait to see what day three has to offer.